ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته welcome back brothers and sisters uh, once more for the completion of this surah we only have a few verses left and inshallah hopefully today we will be able to conclude uh, the surah surah al-kaf so so far we've spoken about the story of dhul qarnain and his encounters with uh, different people uh, and at the end it speaks about the ya'juj and the ma'juj and what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made possible for Dhul Qarnain to do by trapping them and uh, both in the Quran and the Sunnah it is mentioned that they will come out towards the end of time and this is one of the major signs of Yawm Al Qiyamah this is one of the major signs of Yawm Al Qiyamah that they will come out so on uh, first uh, verse uh, 99 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا Meaning that on uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says وَتَرَكْنَا and we left them بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ On that day, meaning the appointed day when they will be released, when they will be able to leave uh, that entrapment, uh, they will يَمُوجُ بَعْضُهُمْ فِي بَعْضٍ The scholars in Islam, they say this can mean one of two things meaning that they will merge with mankind meaning they will be in such huge numbers that when they come they will be merging with mankind the other people uh, and another meaning is that because of their great number they will be such multitude so many that they will be merging amongst themselves and the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, one of the reasons as mentioned in the Ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that they cannot leave that entrapment is because uh, they forget to say Insha'Allah. And if you remember in the beginning of the Surah or towards the, uh, the first part of the Surah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, وَلَا تَقُوا uh, uh, And do not say when it comes to something, إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ so do not say about something that I will do it except that you say inshallah. So these people, again, the surah, it repeats itself and there's beautiful things that people usually don't pick up on. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ And the trumpet will be blown. The trumpet will be blown. And as we've mentioned before, the blowing of the trumpet is of two types, meaning it will be blown two times. One is the initial blowing where all of creation will cease to exist. And the second blowing is where uh, the Qiyamah will start itself. And the scholars in Islam, they've highlighted that the, the Malak, the angel that is in charge of blowing the, uh, the trumpet, his name is Israfil. Israfil. And in the Dua Istiftah, when the Prophet Sallallahu uh, especially during the night prayers, the tahajjud, he would start by saying, Allahumma Rabba Jibra'ila wa Mika'il wa Israfil. He would mention the, uh, these three angels by name. He would mention these three angels by name. So some of the scholars, they looked into it. They say there are many angels that are known to us by name. Why mention these specific, these three angels? So some of the scholars have said, these three angels, they are in charge with the permission of Allah. They are in charge of life itself, different aspects of life. Jibreel, he is in charge of the life of the heart, the most important. He is the Rusul, he is the angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends as a messenger to the prophets. So he comes with the revelation and he gives nourishment to the hearts. So Jibreel is one. Mikael, as mentioned in the Sunnah, he is in charge of uh, the rain with the permission of Allah. 
and this gives life to vegetation, the growth, plants, everything that needs water, mankind as a whole. And then Israfil, he is the one that Allah Azza wa will command to blow the trumpet uh, a second time. And when he blows the trumpet a second time, all of creation will come back into existence. So here Allah Azza wa says, says وَنُفِقَ فِي السُورِ And when the sur, the trumpet is blown, فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا Meaning that we will gather them. In Arabic, if the same word is mentioned twice, one of the benefits of this is, uh, in grammar they say, it shows certainty. When Allah Azza wa Jalla says, for example, قُتِّلُوا تَقْتِيلًا قُتِّلُوا تَقْتِيلًا That they were killed, and because it is repeated, قُتِّلُوا تَقْتِيلًا This shows the certainty of it. Okay, So, فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا that there's no doubt on that day, all of creation, not just mankind, everything that lived will be brought back once more to stand in front of Allah. And on that day, Jahannam, which is one of the names of uh, the hellfire, because the hellfire, uh, it, it has many different uh, names. Okay, Jahim, Saqar, and so on. Some of the scholars they said that these kind of uh, names it actually shows different levels of Jahannam. The different levels have different names. Allahu uh, Alam. For example, there are parts of Jahannam that isn't fire. Parts of Jahannam, the hellfire, is not fire. It is. Uh, it's called Zamharir, and it is uh, cold, bitter cold, to such a degree that even today science they say that once it gets very very cold a person can get burnt in a different way so this is the the type uh, so jahannam they say scholars have said jahannam is the lowest part it's the most evil part of the hellfire so there's many different parts of Jah of uh, hellfire jahannam or nar as is mentioned usually in the quran uh, wallahu alam so on that day, Jahannam, the hellfire will be brought, exposed to all of creation. And in the hadith, it is mentioned that Jahannam will be dragged out. Allahumma ameen. When Jahannam will be dragged out, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that it will be dragged out with 70,000 chains. 70,000 chains. On each chain, there will be 70,000 angels. And even those angels, they will struggle to keep Jahannam in control. Why? Because Jahannam on that day is very angry. It is angry because of those that disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people, they will hear Jahannam far away in the distance before they can see it. And when Jahannam is brought forth, then a person, people's, the disbelievers' hearts will sink because they see and they know that this will be their abode. Yawma idin lil kafirin for those that disbelieved on that day. Arda. Notice again the word is repeated. Wa aradna jahannama yawma idin lil kafirina. Arda. So there's no doubt about these events. Allah Azza wa Jal is. Uh, the most truthful in his speech. الَّذِينَ كَانَتْ أَعْيُنُهُمْ فِي غِطَى Those, and Allah Azza wa Jal describes those people that will be uh, thrown into Jahannam وَالْعِيَادُ billah are the people that their eyes were blinded or they were uh, blocked. غِطَى uh, in Arabic, it means something that covers. Something that covers. So the غِطَى uh, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in other parts of the Quran, uh, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ hadid. That on this day, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, this ghita, this curtain, this barrier, it will be lifted. So they will, their basar, their sight, their vision 
will be hadid, it will be like iron. They will be able to see everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them. So these people are the ones that had this uh, covering over their eyes. And dhikri in terms of the reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were not able to hear. In the Quran, usually uh, this word sam'a it is used in two different ways. Uh, one is yastami'oon or yasma'oon. Yastami'oon or yasma'oon. What is the difference? The difference is yasma'oon is hearing and yastami'oon is listening. So when a person hears, they, they're not necessarily listening. Because this listening, it is an active uh, thing. You need to pay attention. You need to focus. You need to understand. But yasma'oon is just hearing it. So if you have two ears and they function, then you hear. But if you have a heart and you have a mind, then you'll be able to listen and comprehend. So here Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَكَانُوا لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ سَمْعًا They were not even able to hear. Meaning as soon as the Qur'an was recited to them, as soon as they were reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turned their backs against the reminder. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَفَحَسِبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا عِبَادِي مِن دُونِ أَوْلِيَا Allah Azza wa Jalla here speaks about those that disbelieved, that they have taken uh, others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ones that they have taken are the very servants, the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as awliya, as protectors, as uh, things to be worshipped besides Allah. So this, the scholars in Islam, they say it is divided into different categories. One is the one who is worshipped against their will, meaning this person has no blame whatsoever. They passed away and after their death or even during their life, they made it clear that a person, that they should not be worshipped. And once they passed away, then people started worshipping them. The most well-known example is Isa alayhi salam. People worship Isa alayhi salam. But Isa alayhi salam is free of all blame because in his lifetime, he made it clear to people, do not worship me, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Another category is the perhaps the most evil category is the person who calls others towards his own worship. And the most well-known example here is Fir'aun. When he said, Ana rabbukumul a'la, and when he said, Ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri, that I do not know for you any other god besides myself. And then there's people or creation that um, don't make it clear. Meaning that if they know someone worships them, then they don't make it clear to people. And this is usually how shirk uh, creeps into uh, mankind and their worship. So Allah Azza wa says about these people, and in the tafsir it mentions specifically that this uh, verse actually refers to those that uh, worship the angels, those that worship the angels, and there are many people. And along with that could be those that worship the shaytan, those that worship shaytan himself and the shayateen. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Inna a'tadna jahannama lil kafirina nuzula." Verily, we have prepared for the disbelievers jahannam nuzula. Nuzul in Arabic. It can mean two things. One is what a host provides the family, or عفواً, what the host provides his guests. So you come to someone, the food, the shelter, and everything that is provided for you, this is referred to uh, in Arabic as nuzul. Another uh, meaning of it, and both of these uh, meanings are correct, nuzul refers to an abode, a place, a home, okay? And this is uh, something that Allah Azza wa describes both uh, about Jannah and the Nar. That for the kuffar, for the disbelievers, 
Jahannam will be their abode, their place of uh, not resting, but the place that they will find themselves. And Jannah will be Nuzul for the believers, a place of resting and comfort. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the last part of the surah, "Qul hal nunabbiukum bil aksarin a'mala." Qul say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Hal nunabbiukum bil aksarin a'mala?" Shall we not inform you about those that are the most lost when it comes to deeds? Those that are most lost when it comes to deeds. Alladina bala sa'yuhum fil hayat dunya. Those that have lost their way in this hayat dunya. وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ سُنْعًا Whilst they think to themselves that what they're doing is correct. And this is one of the most um, troubling verses. Many of the scholars, they've said in the past that this, uh, this verse and other verses, uh, like in Surah Ghashia, when Allah Azza wa Jalla says, عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَةٌ تَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَةٌ عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَةٌ It means hard-working. They toil, they work day and night. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Tasla naran hamia. And with that, they will be burning in the hellfire. How is this possible? And the answer is because they worked uh, not based upon knowledge. So you will see in this life many people who work tires, tirelessly, meaning that they work all the time. They feed people, they help people, but they have no iman. They don't believe in Allah. They do not uh, do what they don't follow the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these type of people, Allah azza wa jalla says, "Alladina walla sa'yuhum fil hayati dunya." They have lost their way in this hayati dunya, while still they think that they are upon good. Wa hum yahsabuna anna hum yuhsinuna sunaa. Those are the ones that have disbelieved in the verses of their Lord and his meeting. Notice here there's an emphasis and towards the end of the surah there will be an emphasis as well the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is an article of faith believing that after death we will be resurrected and we will be brought in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be judged. So disbelieving in this part of Iman, it makes a person a non-Muslim. So uh, in Islam, we need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us. And it's very sad sometimes today we hear about uh, people who say, I am a Muslim. But I'm not sure about these aspects of the religion. They say, I don't believe that the Quran is really the speech of Allah. Or they say, I do not believe that Allah even exists. But I am Muslim just in case. This is something that I hear often. They say, when they're truthful with you, they say, I'm a Muslim just in case. If there's Allah, then I can say I was Muslim. And if there's no Allah, then I didn't lose out. But this is not how Iman works. Iman needs to be firm. You need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely. فَحَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ These people <coughs> who worked not based upon the knowledge and the guidance of the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ Their good deeds are lost. فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وزنا. So on this day, meaning يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ they will not have no weight. And the scholars in Islam, they've explained this in meaning that when the mizan, when the scales are brought forth, they will have no good deeds to show because all of their good deeds were lost because of them disbelieving. So it doesn't matter whether a person does good. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the intention of a person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will grant that person Iman. But if a person keeps doing what we perceive as good and then they do not believe, then they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with nothing to show for. ذَلِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ And in such a way their reward, their compensation here, Jahannam is Jahannam. بِمَا كَفَرُوا Because of the, their disbelief. 
uh, disbelief. وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِ وَرُسُلِي huzwa, Because they took my verses, Allah Azza wa Jal, now He speaks in the, uh, 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 the directly. وَاتَّخَذُوا They took uh, the ayat, my verses, my signs, وَرُسُلِي And my prophets, my messengers, huzwa as a joke. And this is something that uh, we hear throughout uh, the Quran many times, more than once. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Walaqad istuhuzi'a bi rusulim min qablik," and verily the messengers before you were ridiculed. The, the people used to make fun of them. It is mentioned that uh, Nuh alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa Jalla says about him, "Kullama marra alayhi qawmum, uh, kullama marra alayhi malaum min qawmihi sakhiru min." that every time people would walk by Nuh alayhi salam when he was building uh, the ark, the big ship, they would make fun of him. And in the tafsir it mentions that they, would, they used to say, yesterday you told us that you are a prophet. وَالْيَوْمْ سِرْتَ najaran, And today you became a carpenter. So they would mock the prophets, they would make fun of the prophets. And in certain uh, circumstances they would even kill the prophets. So because of that, Allah Azza wa Jal punishes these type of people. Inna ladina amanu. Now Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the reward for those that believe. Inna ladina amanu. Verily those who believe. Wa amilu salihati and do good. Kanat lahum jannatul firdausi nuzula. Notice here the same word is used. Nuzul and uh, nuzul in before that. Nuzula. Jannatul uh, firdausi nuzula. Al-Firdaus, just like we spoke about Jahannam having uh, different levels, in Arabic they say uh, Jahannam or An-Nar, it has Darakat. Darakat. Darakat in Arabic it means anything that goes down. Darakat. It goes down. Fiddarkil asfali min an-Nar. So it goes down. When you speak about something that goes up, we say Darajat. Darajat. So Jannah has daraj, uh, darajat and Jahannam al billah it has darakat. So Jahannam is the lowest part and it is reserved for uh, Fir'aun uh, and uh, the Munafiqun. Inna al munafiqina fi darkil asfali min al nar. So the worst of creation are in the lowest part of the hellfire, whereas the highest level, the highest daraja, uh, in Jannah is Al Firdaus. This is why the Prophet he encouraged, uh, inc he encouraged us that when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, we make always dua for Jannatul Firdaus, Al A'la, the highest level of Jannah, which is Al Firdaus. So those who believe, uh, they will have uh, Al Firdaus. The scholars in Islam, they've said <coughs> that. Uh, Jannah, it has a hundred levels, a hundred different levels to it. And people in one part of Jannah, they will be looking up at the next Jannah the same way that we look up to, to the stars. The same way that we look up to the stars. And a person can only achieve the highest level of Jannah one, once they perfect their Iman, once they perfect their Iman. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and this is one of the most beautiful uh, verses uh, in the whole surah, perhaps in the whole Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, خَالِدِينَ fiha, They will remain there forever. Khuld in Arabic, it is eternity. Khuld is eternity, forever. خَالِدِينَ fiha, They will remain there. لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا hiwala, That they will not want any substitute for it. Sometimes students, they ask, they say, if a person experiences uh, bliss, joy, enjoyment for a very long time, by human nature, a person gets tired, right? If you... If every day is Eid, there will come a time where you get fed up, you get tired, right? But Jannah is not like that. 
you will never ever get tired of Jannah. A thousand years passes, a million years pass, and you will never be tired of Jannah. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal said, لا يبغون عنها حولا They will not want any substitute to Jannah. And this is also in the hadith where it is mentioned that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will uh, make Malakul Maut into uh, a, sh a sheep or a goat and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will call towards the people of Jahannam and he will call towards the people of Jannah and then this uh, uh, Malakul Maut will be killed and Allah Azza wa Jal, he says to all of creation that there is no more death and eternity khuld for both of you and the people of Jannah will rejoice so the Jannah, uh, another part that is important to mention before we uh, move on towards the final verses, Allah Azza wa Jal, when He speaks about Jannah, Jannah is whatever you imagine. Jannah is whatever you want. So Jannah, it is described in a general way, often in the Quran, Jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. But Allah Azza wa Jal also tells us in the Quran that in Jannah you will have whatever your heart wishes, whatever you desire, whatever you want. Your hopes, your dreams, everything comes true in Jannah. So Jannah is not just this uh, image of gardens and rivers that flow underneath. Jannah becomes whatever you want. And this is why it is important for us as Muslims to work hard to, uh, to achieve Jannah bi Allah Azza wa Jal says, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For this, meaning Jannah and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ Let people work. Today, if someone told you that if you work for a week, seven days, you will get the biggest mansion that you can imagine. I'm sure some of us wouldn't even sleep. We would work as hard as we can because we know that this mansion is waiting for us. And after a short period of time, a week, we will go to that mansion. So what about Jannah? This lifetime, it is very short. Earlier today, we went to visit the graves and some of you were there. And we mention a very important point, which is that people will spend more time in their graves than they do alive. And you see people, we know people, our grandparents, people before us, the amount of time, the Prophet Sallallahu the companions, they've been dead for 1,400 years. And how long did they live? 60, 70 years. Similarly, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best, when we die, we will remain there in the barzakh until Yawm al -Qiyamah. So don't, the point is, don't lose the akhirah for the sake of this dunya, because this dunya will come and pass. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِذَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَذَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا This, the scholars in Islam, they say it is in, uh, uh, it refers to uh, the, the revelation and uh, the knowledge and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the revelation and the knowledge that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it uh, we had midadan uh, kalimati rabbi lanafid al bahru qabla an tanfada kalimati rabbi even if there were seas upon seas oceans upon oceans uh, of uh, some of the scholars they put here they mention uh, of ink something to write down and even then all these oceans would uh, uh, finish, they would dry up before 
the uh, the words, the, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is complete uh, versus this, the scholars, they say this is mutashabihat. It shows us the infinite knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have one portion. Allah azza wa has granted us this portion of knowledge. But even then within the Quran, Allah azza wa tells us many times over, وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the, the unknown, the unseen parts of the, uh, the, the, the heavens and the earth. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says in many other parts of the Quran that uh, we do not have knowledge. Uh, for example, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, ruh. They ask you about the ruh. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Qul min amri rabbi wa ma utitum. Even the ruh, which is the essence of mankind, our own ruh, we have no knowledge about it. So what about the universe and everything else that Allah created? So this humbles us. It makes us grounded. It makes us understand that the Creator knows best. Allah ya'lamu man khalaqa. That Allah Azza wa Jal always knows best. And then the last verse of the surah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am إِنَّمَا uh, The scholars in Islam, the, in Arabic, they say إِنَّمَا It is Adat Hasr meaning that it makes something specific. So in English, it would be uh, equal to saying only. Okay, so إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرُ مِثْلُكُمْ I am only a bashar, a human being, a, man, a, a, a person, مِثْلُكُمْ مثلكم, مثلكم, Like you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, He aff affirms that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a human being, he's not an angel. He was not created by light. The Prophet Sallallahu is of flesh and blood. He is not part of Allah. He is not Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu is a human being. However, there's a very big point here that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that makes the Prophet Sallallahu very different. And the point is, Yuha ilayhi, that I have received the revelation. And this makes the Prophet ﷺ a prophet and a messenger. Annama ilahukum ilahu wahid. This revelation is summarized by Allah Azza wa Jal into one point, which is La ilaha illallah. The whole of Islam. The, uh, there's no um, additional points that are mentioned. It doesn't say that I was commanded this and I was commanded that. No. Annama ilahukum ilahu wahid. La ilaha illallah. So this is the essence of the tawheed, the belief that we have. Interestingly, the scholars in Islam, they say, when we speak about the Prophet wasallam, they say, Adduna ar-Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min jinsil bashar ka'addina al-yaqut min jinsil hajar. This is a very beautiful way. It means that when we say that the Prophet وسلم, is from mankind, that he is a human being, this is true. But it is like us saying that Yaqut, you know, uh, gems and, and, and pearls and these kind of so precious things, the gems and pearls and these kind of things are from stone. Are they from stone? Yes, they are. But if you have a stone and you have a gem, which one is more valuable? It's the gem. So when we say that the Prophet ﷺ is a human being a man, uh, from mankind, this does not mean that we are putting the Prophet ﷺ down. It is for us to remember so that we don't elevate the Prophet ﷺ like the people have done to other prophets, where they started saying this person is the son of God and so on. So it is a reminder for us and this is what the Prophet ﷺ would often say. He would say, Say, uh, Innama ana uh, Abdullahi wa Rasulu. 
that say I am the slave, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So you strike that balance. You don't look uh, at the Prophet sallallahu as if he is anyone amongst us because he is not. But at the same time, you understand that the Prophet sallallahu his place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ So whoever longs, yearns, wants the meeting with his Lord, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Then let that person do good deeds. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And let him not associate any partners with his Lord whatsoever. أَحَدًا So this part, it is the, the essence of Tawheed. What is Tawheed? Tawheed is to affirm the worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and also to negate anything that opposes it whatsoever. Okay, to negate whatever opposes it. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ that whoever makes kufr of the ta'ud and believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This person has hold, held on to the urwat al the rope that never breaks. So inshallah with that we have concluded uh, this surah Alhamdulillah alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimmu salihat and inshallah uh, in the coming uh, few weeks we will start a new surah bi idnillah and the surah that we'll uh, continue with will be al hujurat al hujurat bi idnillah hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh